Hello, um, I'm here to give the continuing series of the year. Um, uh, continuing series are part of the foundation that um, keeps all of this that we live alive. Um, it's hard enough, as we all know, to uh, create a comic book, and it's hard enough even to just get it out there. So for any of us that can continually come out there, that leaves the doors open all the time for each two generations to see it, to love it, and then to share it to their next generation. So, the, uh, the nominees are Batman, the Daredevil, Hawkeye, Sage, I guess they, uh, they ran out of A's. <laughs> um, Sock. Um, Superior Spider Man. And The Walking Dead. And the winner is. Walking Dead. And now I'd like to uh, welcome up to the stage the one, the only, Jill Smithers. City Stores in Metro Detroit and one of the board members of the Sheldorf Awards. And I'm here this year to present the Sheldorf Legacy Award. This year's recipient is no stranger to anyone in this room or in the industry at all. Born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> it seems that Steve Jeppe has been in the comic book industry his whole life. And in fact, that's somewhat true since his, his life in comics began at the age of nine, where he bundled comics and magazines for a used comic, re uh, comic book dealer. And he must have enjoyed the comics that he bundled because he actually accepted um, comics as part of his compensation for his work. So, um, later in life, when he worked for the Postal Service, he started selling um, old comics at the weekend cons and realized that there seemed to be some money in this industry. So in 1974, Jeffy's, comic, uh, Jeffy's World um, comic shops were born. His one store then expanded to four, one of which was in the beautiful Harbor Place Pavilion in downtown Baltimore at the Inner Harbor. And um, I had visited that store in the past and it was very beautiful. In 1982, when his comic distributor at that time was in some um, having difficulties, he made the deal and he began his life in the comic book distribution business. Diamond Comics was born and has since become the world's largest distributor of English language comics and the exclusive distributor to many publishers, including DC, Marvel, Dark Horse, and Image, among others. His love of comics does not end with distributing. Steve is involved in, with preserving and promoting the industry of the comics medium and is the founder of Gemstone Publishing, which some of these, um, some of the product lines include Overstreet Comic Book Grading Guide, the big, big Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide, and the official price guide to pop culture. In 1995, Steve opened the Diamond International Galleries, a gallery devoted to comics, comic collectibles, and comic-related art. Also in Camden Yards, District of Baltimore, Steve opened Jeppy's Entertainment Museum. If anyone ever has been there, they know it's, uh, it's, it's 
It's a beautiful museum and well worth your time. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I enjoy myself there. Now, since I just mentioned Camden Yards, um, I need everyone to know that I'm an Essex, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland girl, born and bred myself. So I'm very familiar with that name, Camden Yards. So Steve, I want to make you feel comfortable here in Detroit. activities include work with the Johns Hopkins Heart Institute and their Neurosurgery Advisory Board, Pathfinders for Autism, and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Some of the awards that Steve has received in the past included the International Achievement Award from the U.S. Department of Commerce and a 1993 Entrepreneur of the Year for Maryland. Now we are very proud to add to his list of awards, and I am proud to present the Sheldorf Legacy Award to Mr. Stephen A. Jeppe. Thanks so much, Jill. This is a great honor to say the least. Um, my roots in the Detroit Triple Fanfare Convention actually go back to the 70s mm -hmm. when I made that infamous drive from Baltimore to Detroit to hawk some old comic books. And uh, what a fond remembrance that is, because a lot of the people that I met back then became really good friends of mine. Uh, I've been a very fortunate guy in my life. I think we've all been very fortunate to take something that we love, a passion we have for it, and turn it into a business. Someone once said that if you love what you're doing, you'll never work another day in your life, and I guess that makes all of us unemployed because we all love what we're doing, don't we? Yeah. Uh, I really want to take this opportunity. I know it's a, a great honor for me and it's a, about my award right now, but what I really want to talk about a little bit here is about you guys. You know, Diamond Comic Distributors is the, the exclusive distributor for most of the publishers, as was mentioned, and we're very proud of our position in the industry. But we all know and you guys certainly know, without you guys, we there would be no Diamond Comics. We uh, all went through a tremendous upheaval in the mid-90s when uh, Marvel bought a distributor, and it looked like the world was coming to an end, and as it turns out, it didn't come to an end. I think the death of comics has been written in the pages of history at least 20 different times with many different things going to put us out of business, whether it would be the advent of the digital age today, or whether it be computers or television or radio, the great thing about comic books is that they partner with all those medias. So whatever is happening now, whatever has happened, and whatever is yet to happen, fear not, you're well insulated because this product that we love is so special that it's being embraced around the world. And everybody gets a chance once in a while. We all went through, and not just the comic industry, but the whole world, or certainly the United States in the last five or six years, went through a terrible economic downturn. But the beauty of our industry, when in a world where Bear Stearns is going and... Uh, all these big companies, WAMU, you name it, these companies all went under, and yet the little comic book companies, the little distributors, the little publishers, the little retailers, all the creators are still working. So we must be doing something right. And I'm very proud to say that today, if you look at the numbers for the last few years, the comic industry is on the rise. And for the first time, you're seeing, as a result of conventions such as this, the San Diego Comic Con, New York, whatever else, the world is starting to recognize that what we've been doing, us little geeks and nerds as they like to call us, has hit the heart and soul of pop culture. And today, you see movie stars showing up at the conventions proud to say they played X part in what movie, whereas it used to be they kind of, under the hush of their breath, said, well, you know, I did play one little part. 
most of these people were comic book fans growing up. They just never had a chance to express it without getting accused, as we did, of having three heads or being illiterate. But I'm very proud of what's happening right now, and I'm happy that the Detroit Triple Fanfare Convention has been resurrected. That makes me feel good because I was walking around the room out there, and a comment was made earlier about San Diego being a multimedia type of an event. And it is, and it's served its purpose, and it's wonderful. But I'm kind of old school. I really love getting out there with the dealers and wheeling and dealing in the room and just remembering the times when it was fun to get behind somebody's table and look up old comics. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all for what you do for my company every year, the many retailers who buy from us. Uh, you know, sometimes people think, well, we don't have any choice. We have to buy from Diamond. They're an exclusive distributor. Never think for a minute, for a second, that Diamond doesn't appreciate your business because it is the lifeblood of the industry. I have a ton of hardworking employees who are here tonight. Uh, who put their heart and soul, and they, many of my employees have now been with me over 20 years, which says a lot about their love for the industry. So thank you so much. Uh, I look out, I see a lot of familiar faces. I hope I get to say hi to most of you tonight. But I'm very proud to receive this award, especially knowing my good buddy Stan Lee once got it. So now he doesn't have that on me, but he does so many other things. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's what our program for tonight. I definitely want to thank everybody for uh, having us all out here tonight. I definitely want to thank to the three that make it possible every year for bringing back the Detroit Fanfare and for having me back on. Would you like to guys come on up? Tony, Ben, come on up. Thank you for letting me uh, host this and uh, also uh, tear people's hands apart. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here and these awards. Uh, you know, it's a growing award, but it really means a lot to us. And uh, this year was really special, I think, uh, you know, for Jeff Smith. Uh, it's a new award that we started, the Spark Award. Steve Jeffy, who has had such a tremendous impact in this industry. And uh, thank, you, thank, you. Uh, thank you. some fantastic books, resurrecting a lot of stuff that people haven't seen. So uh, I'm really proud of this year. I really, really, really like what we did this year as far as the special awards. I'd like to thank everybody uh, who uh, just comes out to support uh, a lot of the uh, undiscovered uh, talent uh, at our show. Uh, I think we, we try to do a... Uh, we try to do uh, a a good job of trying to spotlight a lot of uh, local uh, undiscovered talent and uh, I, I really appreciate when uh, people come out and, uh, and pay attention to them and and, and uh, just kind of take a take a take time to sample something new something different uh, something unproven that they're not familiar with and uh, I think it, it not only makes the creators feel good but it makes us as uh, as people who are trying to promote them feel good that uh, people are taking the time to, to notice them. So I just want to thank everybody for that. All right. Uh, you know what I realized? I sat here and uh, when Brian was up here plugging uh, my, one of my competitors, Green Brain Comics, which I fully, totally cooperate with. Yeah, plug, that's yeah, right. I realized Bob and Joe, Comic City, Dennis Barger, Wonder World Comics, in Taylor, Michigan, about 10 minutes from here. I didn't get a plug, so I wanted to make sure I got my plug. Uh, all right. Um, I'll tell you what, I appreciate everyone coming out. And from the bottom of my heart, I look around and I agree with Gary. This is one of the most special ones. At the point when Dan Doherty was up here, and he's getting the award from Jeff Smith, that's what the Detroit Triple Fanfare was all about back in the day. You would bring in Jack Kirby, and he would meet with some kid that he'd never met named Greg Feakston. And before you know it, Greg Feakston is sitting there doing work for him when he couldn't move his hands to keep the family going. And you, you get the young bloods meeting the, the, the people that have accomplished and hit the top of that mountain. And that's what this show is about, and that's what this awards program is about. And it doesn't care, in, in my mind, that if four presenters or, or four recipi recipients we're here to pick them up. It's the fact that the people voted for this, 
the fans voted for this, the industry voted for this, and the awards were given. And the people who were here tonight, they understood this is something worth being here for because this is our industry. And it all comes down to the support that you're giving all of us by coming to our show. A show that we built off of Gary Reed's Rolodex, Tony Miello's talent, and the money I make from selling Steve's comics. So that's this industry. Keep supporting Detroit Fanfare. Twitter, if you know who won and said, why weren't you there to win? You better, you better be at Detroit Fanfare next year so you can get your Shell North Awards. Tell everybody about this show. We're the little engine that could. This is our fourth year. Next year's our fifth anniversary. We want to try to get as much of the industry here to see what everybody here has gotten to see. Thank you for coming out. We've got bar going on downstairs. We still got the Gary Reed Dead World uh, zombie party going on. Detroit Fanfare is a great show by day and it's a great party by night. So thank you very much. Let's get partying.